Hi everyone, it's Chrissy again with the third installment of this suicide prevention brief. We're focusing on some protective factors and resilience that can help prevent suicide within yourself or within those around you. Um, so the second thing that I want, we've talked about several factors, but one of the other big things that helps anyone when they experience stress or feel overwhelmed in life is their ability to seek help when they feel overwhelmed. So this slide actually talks about this. Why sailors won't usually seek help. So most believe that they would receive help if they asked and that their peers would be supportive. However, all of these factors here, okay? They might be the subject of gossip. Um, there's a general old feeling of tough it up, toughen up, get over it. Many believe that it might negatively impact their career, that they would lose trust with other people. Um, I really think, this is just my opinion, I think one of the ways you can really mitigate some of these factors and feelings are when people in leadership positions say, hey, I've had things happen to me in my life, or I've known somebody who had horrible things happen to them in their life. They went out, they sought help, they got the help they needed, and now they are fully productive and capable members of society now. Most people think that asking for help might mean that they are suddenly put a scarlet letter on their chest. People will know forever that they had issues, they had problems, they had suicidal tendencies. This is just not as true for everyone. There are plenty of people who have had issues, problems, overcame them, and became greater through them. So think about that as well. So the question I want to ask too is, um, many people will not go and seek help for suicide related tendencies because they feel like it will affect their security clearance. So this slide addresses that. And the most important thing I can show you, if this is the only thing you remember from this brief, please know this. Less than 1% of security clearance denials and revocations involve psychological health concerns. So that means the other 99% are due to something else. So it's less than 1% somebody has a psychological health concern and has a security clearance denial or revocation. The other 99%, I wonder if you can think about what those factors would be. Number one would be your finances. Number two would most likely be that you had some kind of a legal issue and the most likely one is domestic violence within the military. So think about that. Those are all the other ones, all 99% have nothing to do with, I had something happen to me in my life, I'm struggling, I'm reaching out and getting help. Okay, less than 1% if that happens to someone, okay? So you do not need to be reported for security clearance, um, you do not need to be reported to the security clearance if you're getting counseling related to adjustment to service in a military combat environment, if you're having marital or family issues, if you're going for grief, if you've lost someone in your life and you're experiencing sadness, or if you have been the victim of sexual assault. None of that is reported ever, okay? So just know that, that this should not be a concern when you're seeking help, that many times service members can go seek help, get help, and then go on to be very productive. All right, so the next slide we have here talks about other protective factors that increase resilience and that are helpful for coping with stress. Um, we've talked about several of these on another slide, but maybe the one that I want to bring attention to on this slide is maybe a sense of personal control. Um, if you've ever read The Happiness Advantage or watched anything that has to do with focusing on the things we can't control versus the things that we can control, um, realize that if you find yourself going down an unhealthy thought pattern, you can, through learning about mental strength, mostly with mindfulness and meditation, you can learn how to retrain your brain to focus on thought patterns that are helpful and useful to you. So. This is all really, really, really important. If you don't recognize this in yourself, you don't recognize it in your command, you don't recognize it in your culture, it's time to make a change. 
Those of you who are doing some of these already, pat yourself on the back, that's really good. But look where you can have some improvements in your life as well. Because as leaders, which all of you will be at some point, you're gonna need to be able to help people who are in difficult situations in their life. So if you're regularly taking care of yourself first, you'll be able to then help other people. And you'll recognize the signs if you are having regular conversations with people, you're getting to know your sailors, your coworkers, outside of what you do for work every day. So normally in this brief, I actually have everyone turn around and talk um, for two minutes and I ask them to find something they have in common that doesn't have anything to do with work and doesn't have anything to do with the Navy. And then I'll razz a couple people because they'll say, oh, we have we both like football. I'm like, oh, way to go. Good dig in there. Um, I meet a lot of people um, going out to different commands around San Diego. And I play this game sometimes when I'm small talking with people. And I will just ask a lot of questions until I find something that we have in common. And then I'll be like, oh, I'm for, I, you know, I didn't grow up in that part of Oklahoma, but I was there one time. My aunt lived there for a short amount of time. Did you ever go to uh, Bob's Barbecue? And then suddenly we have something in common that he recognizes something in me that's like him. And then we've developed a connection. So think about regularly having those connections. When you have someone you know at your workplace who likes to do roller derby, let's just say that for an example. I had a coworker that did that once. So, And they regularly roller derby, that's what they love to do. They do it for stress relief. They do it to bond with other people. And you suddenly notice that they don't talk about roller derby anymore. You ask about if they go to roller derby and they say, no, I'm not interested in it anymore. Um, this should be a red flag. It should be, you should say they're changing their patterns of behavior. They might be experiencing more stress than normal. This is something we need to watch out for. So the last slide we have here are resources. This is our suicide prevention hotline that's staffed 24 seven. Um, I actually recommend that sailors all have that on their phone. You never know when you're gonna be walking into a situation and then suddenly it's a um, need for help with suicide prevention. Every um, probably three months, I'll be just going to pick up something from one of the other offices at Fleet and Family and I'll have someone come up to me and say, I need to, uh, I need to have help, I feel suicidal. And we have to go and, and care for them immediately. And that also brings me to another point. I don't ever try and act as a therapist or as someone that works in crises for suicide prevention. I leave that to counselors, to chaplains, to people who are trained for that. I'm trained in suicide prevention to teach in education. I will not buy for them. So our job is to get them warm hand off, we stay with them until they can get to the help that they need. Okay, that's really, really important. So listening, telling them that you care, and then getting them to the place where they need to be. Um, so that's our line there. Know that you can reach out to the chaplains. This is the Naval Base San Diego chaplain. Um, this link that you can't see very well is the chaplains core, navy.mil slash local slash chaplains core. Um, this is the mood clinic in San Diego. This is where you can actually access some more uh, non-medical services for dealing with your um, mental health crisis. Um, Fleet and Family and then Military One Source are available. And then some of our other national hotlines, Hope Network here, the Air Force, the Army, the Navy Suicide Prevention Program, that's where this brief came from, and the Marine Corps. And then the last thing we just ask is one small act can always save a life. Um, there's actually some really nice videos on this website talking about very small things that make a very big difference in people's lives. Um, I'm actually during the global pandemic, I'm always very encouraged when I take my one daily walk to see any little signs of life that people have put in their windows, like, um, uh, rainbows or teddy bears or something like that. that actually all is really good stuff for you it increases your oxytocin levels and it makes you and your serotonin it makes you feel like you're a part of a community that you are a part of something all together um all right that's all i have for today um thank you so much for watching and fleet and family is really excited to see all of you on the other side of this when this is all gone so thank you so much for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you soon bye